Hello, it's Mr Cunningham, we're at St Peter's School and it is the 26th of August. Um, a lot has changed over the summer holidays, I hope you've managed to make uh, the best out of the summer holidays, come rain or shine. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that in the next two weeks before we open our doors to children um, to come back to St Peter's, a few more things will change still. During this video though, uh, I want to just go over a few of the logistics which we're pretty sure will not need to change between now and Monday the 7th of September. Once again, I'm going to go over the logistics for accessing the school grounds and exiting the school grounds, whether you're in your car, on foot, or whether you and your children are using a bicycle or a scooter. They're going to be slightly different from what we had in May, June and July, so uh, do please keep watching even if you think you're familiar with the wrong routine. Equally, um, I have got assistance drafted in for this video from Mr Crozier, the Deputy Head, who will talk about the setup of our typical classrooms in Year 2 through to Year 6, and then Mrs Knight is going to give a presentation on the specific focus for our classrooms in Year 1 uh, and Year R our youngest learners and our new starters who are looking forward to beginning their school life at St Peter's. Before we go on to looking at drop off and pick up routines, some broad brush fundamentals. In line with government guidance issued before the summer break uh, and no further specific guidance about running schools has come out, even if the rules on changing changing for masks in secondary school settings have just come out this morning. In line with the government guidance, we're going to be keeping children in class bubbles. So we'll be teaching them in full class sizes, 30 in year R and through stage one, 32 and through stage two. But each class will operate throughout the school day as a distinct bubble, getting dropped off and picked up at a separate time and in different places, but also throughout that whole school day the use of toilet facilities, going out to break time, going out to lunch time, will all be done as a class bubble. We are keeping to an absolute minimum, if not aiming to eliminate any interaction during the school learning day between children from different classes. We have got arrangements for before school supervision and after school supervision. They were sent out in July in a letter. It will look very different from breakfast club and after school club. I stress that it is supervision rather than activity club uh, and really should only be used if your work or home life requirements mean that you do need to drop off your child before they're allocated a point for arriving at school if you need to pick them up after the finish of their learning day. That will be supervision and the children will be kept separately in their class bubbles uh, it will look very different from the clubs, but during the school learning day, so when the teachers are in charge uh, and the children are in, underway with their lessons, each class will be kept separately throughout the day. They'll have different allocated places to play on the playgrounds and the fields. There will be a very specific rolling over for lunch times, uh, and certain classes where the children bring cat lunches will be asked to eat those cat lunches in their classrooms once we've sanitised the tables. And that's just to make sure that each child eats in a timely fashion, but also that we can keep our capacity under control in the lunchroom. So we're outside and we're on the driveway to come into school. Now for September, I'm going to ask for a one-way circular system on the school grounds for anybody driving a car, coming in as a pedestrian, or them or their children using cycles or scooters to get into school. I'm going to ask that this is the only point by which you enter the school grounds. Please do not use the pedestrian gate by the field to enter the school grounds. That's going to be our exit gate. We're welcoming back all the children. That's 436, so our family numbers will double. And what we really need is everybody to be coming into the school grounds this way. If you're arriving on a bicycle or a scooter, please dismount and walk that bike or scooter up the driveway. Pedestrians and cars coming up using the designated walkway for pedestrians and cars please driving as slowly as you can. By the time term starts, 
there could well be new gates here to uh, denote the entrance of the school grounds but we'll have those open in the morning and the afternoon to enable drop-off and pick up. One of the first differences that we're going to introduce as a temporary measure is how we help children who go to Oakland School but also have a younger brother or sister at St Peter's access Oakland so that you as family can drop off both your or several of your children at the same time. Normally they cut across the North Playground with their passes. For the start of term and for the foreseeable future, we're going to allow children who go to Oakland but are being dropped off by families with younger siblings at St Peter's to walk up the back drive because as it says on the ground, this drive leads to Oakland School. If you're in your car, you can stop at this corner and your Oakland children can get out and walk straight up. We will be issuing passes and we'll have plenty of those on hand for the first couple of weeks of term, so please do not worry if your child arrives in the morning without a pass. If you're coming in as a family walking, well, at this point, your child who's walking with you to Oakland can just peel away uh, and so too bicycles and scooters. But please remember, we don't want any bicycles or scooters to be ridden on our school grounds and we don't want any bicycles ridden on Oakland school grounds. As and when we revert back to normal routines, we're more than likely to be letting children cross the North Playground. But for now, we want you to get your Oakland children safely to school, whilst at the same time us having secure knowledge of the fact that it's just our St Peter's children coming onto our playground. We'll be asking half of the school to drop their children off for the North Playground. Details of which class is dropping off at the North Playground will be issued again in a letter. If you're driving into school, I'd ask you to, at this point on the school driveway, position yourself well over to the right so that your child can open a car door without that door opening into the walkway that's marked on the ground. This will mean that those children walking in with their families or pushing their bikes or scooters in can walk within the white lines. Your children can get out of the car without blocking off that walkway and then they can join the children walking in the white lines. Don't worry about trying to get out of the way of cars that may need to come past you. There's going to be a lot of waiting involved as we get used to this, so everyone can just be patient with one another. When we do drop off here, please don't feel you have to wait until you're at the end of the walkway and opposite the North Playground gate for your child to get out of the car. With this much space available, three, four cars at a time can all disembark their children, they can all step safely onto the walkway and we can start to send cars away in waves rather than one by one. We will put out some cones to help direct the cars as we did in June and July. Now, half of our classes are off their children at the south playground. That's not necessarily Key Stage 1 against Key Stage 2, it's just to distribute the children's uh, time of arrival across the school site. If you're a family coming in in a car and you're only dropping off children on the south playground, you can actually not bother going the long way round in front of the Unity building, but you can use the right hand fork to peel through this car park and go straight to the south playground drop off. That should help ease a bit of the traffic flow. If you do happen to be dropping off children where their times are both at the south and the north playground, drop off at the north first and then go to the south. But can I stress please, there's a give way sign here which applies just as it does on a public road. If you've dropped off at the north, please do stop, look right and go ahead carefully and slowly. Please always make sure that you're using indicators on the school site to show your direction of travel to other drivers. And please remember there are going to be lots of pedestrians on site as well as car users. If you are a pedestrian, please stick with the long way round to walk onto the school site. Please do not walk through this central car park. It makes for an awful lot of worry when we see pedestrians and cars intermingling so much on St Peter's grounds. So here we are at the entrance of the North Playground. You can see the car drop-off zone. Please make full use of that length to have four, maybe even five cars disembarking children at the same time. If you park to the 
right for children to get out of the car safely without blocking the walkway and they can join the walkway. If you're a car driver, you've got children up here, they go into the single gate to access the north playground and we will line them up accordingly by class, make sure they're kept at a good distance from one another and ready to be taken in to start their day's learning. If you are a pedestrian or you've come onto the school site and your children have scooters or bikes, do please walk all the way around, but we're going to ask you to keep going. We've got to have this one-way system in order to make sure that the adults go through the school in one direction with minimal crossover. We're obviously being conscious both of looking after the children's welfare and well-being, but making sure that adults can maintain that type of social distancing that is expected out in the public and in places like supermarkets and parks. As I mentioned in the introduction, some families may need to make exceptional use of the four school supervision in order to have their children looked after. We'd ask for this use to be kept to a minimum, but if you do need to avail yourself of that provision, if this is the point at which you drop your children off, we'd ask you to keep with the one-way flow for pedestrians and car drivers, making sure that adults stay a good distance from one another pickup will be from the front office but more details about these arrangements will come out in letter from the office about the necessary before school and after school supervision. So we're just outside the South Playground now. Car drivers first of all. If your child is in a year group which is being dropped off on the South Playground, it could be any year group, not just key stage one or early years, we'd ask you to drive around the roundabout. And I just have one last instruction. There'll be many of you who are accessing the school on foot, or as cyclists, or scooter users for your children, but you're leaving your child off at the North Playground. Here's where I am going to really ask a favour of you. Could you, once you've dropped your child off at that North Playground gate, just please keep walking around this way, and even without your children, take that same route that we've asked for pedestrians and children dropping off on the, same, on the South Playground. And it just means that we won't have adults doubling back, but if you're dropping your child off at the North Playground, please don't turn 180 degrees and leave the way you came. Please don't cut back through the central car park because cars could be coming in that way, but we'd ask you just to keep that walk going around here. It will make for a long 
morning walk. If you're wearing a Fitbit, it will increase your step count for the day. But most importantly, it helps us to have a clockwise rotation of vehicles and pedestrians to enter the school site, move through the school site and exit the school site, all in the same order, all in the same direction. We're starting off with this for the September term. You know that I really want to return to something as close to normal as we can possibly have. But for the time being, thank you for all the efforts you're going to put in to helping us have drop-off and collection run swiftly, smoothly and most importantly, safely for everybody on the St Peter's site. So here we are in a typical school classroom. This is what a classroom layout will look like from year two all the way up through to year six. And as you can see, all of the desks have been separated. Um, and you will see that there are two chairs to every desk. So two children will be sitting alongside each other, side by side, and all of the children will be facing forwards. And this is to ensure um, that face-to-face -face contact is, is at a minimum in the, in, in the classroom. Um, so all of the children will be facing forwards uh, and they will be able to work side by side with their partner. Um, they, every classroom, every child will have their own tray and in that tray will be all the stationary equipment that they need for the school day. So they will have their key boots um, and they will also have a bag with all of their key stationary equipment in it. And again, this is to reduce uh, movement around the classroom but also to ensure that um, any sharing of resources is also at a minimum um, throughout the school day. So they'll have all of their stationary equipment in a bag. This means that children do not need to bring in any stationary from home. Um, they won't need any pencil cases either. We're providing all of that for them. And again, we, what we want is to ensure that there's very little uh, of resources that's moving between school and home. If there are any resources that are being shared um, in class throughout the school day, uh, they will be cleaned on a, on a regular basis. Um, every classroom will have its own sink area where children will be able to uh, wash their hands and we'll be encouraging children to do that on a regular basis throughout the day. Uh, children will wash their hands before they come in to the classroom in the morning, um, uh, first thing. They will also wash their hands before break and after break and we'll be encouraging children to wash their hands if they cough or sneeze throughout the day as well. And all of this will be explained uh, on numerous occasions to the children as they come back to school. So here we are in one of our uh, year group shared areas and again as you can see very similar uh, setup to the classroom. Uh, tables have been separated um, and children again will be able to sit side by side and all of the children again facing forwards to reduce that face to face contact. And um, this will be a, a space where um, small group work can happen, uh, breakaway groups, uh, some pre-learning and some post-learning and follow-up work um, to uh, the main lesson. And every uh, classroom shared area will have the same setup as this. Welcome to our year one classrooms. So as you can see, the classrooms are set up in a very different way, much more similar to the, the setup the children would be used to in year R. And the reason for that is that we know that the children need to have that active uh, practical learning opportunity and we're dedicated to making sure the children have that opportunity. So the children um, will mostly be moving around the classroom freely and between activities the children will be encouraged to wash their hands. They will also be asked to wash their hands uh, on arrival, uh, when they are going outside and when they come in from playing in our outside area. Every classroom in Blue Place, so Year R and Year 1, have their own outdoor area and they will be encouraged to spend as much time outside as possible, uh, come rain or shine, so they will need to have uh, waterproof clothing with them. Um, the children will be able to uh, play with each other, but when they're sat working with an adult, they will be encouraged to sit next to each other to avoid that face-to-face -face contact. So, as I said previously, each of the Blue Place classrooms have an outdoor area dedicated uh, to each class. Uh, this is our newest area, which is still being
often stays out much the same way as it has been uh, in the past and the children will be able to access the different toys and equipment independently. Uh, they will be encouraged to wash their hands before and after using the different equipment as well as uh, when they're outside and uh, when they're coming in from break times and lunch times. So there you have it, a view of some of the outline logistics for how we'll operate the flat bubbles, the means of getting children into uh, and out of the school at the beginning and the end of the day, uh, and a view of our typical classroom setups across the school. As I said, it's Wednesday the 26th of August. Uh, we will continue to work for the remainder of the school holidays, but the children aren't back until Monday the 7th of September for years one to six, and year R we have a different induction programme for you. Um, but rest assured that further details will come out in letters. Uh, I'll keep them as brief as I can, although you know that that's not always possible, both for the amount that I like to write and for the amount of information I need to transmit. Um, but hopefully the combination of watching this video and then keeping up to date with the letters over the next 10 days to a fortnight will lead to a really successful uh, and really popular start to the school term. In the last week of July 2020, of the children eligible to attend in years R1 and 6, 89% uh, of those children did so. Uh, and we were able to run the school very successfully for the vast majority of the children who fell into the government nominated categories of being eligible to attend the school. Our planning was so successful that we've just had to increase that to account for double the numbers that we achieved we're convinced that we can do that successfully at St Peter's, plus have the adaptability to change if any new circumstances arise. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. As I said the last time I recorded, schools are very lonely places without children because schools are just buildings if they don't have children in them. It is the peoples that make the school. And I, for one, speaking on behalf of all of my colleagues, cannot wait to welcome all of your children back on Monday the 7th of September. Thank you very much. We'll see you then.